Hi everyone, welcome back to the Savant Report. Today we're gonna cover brand new housing data. We're gonna take a look at the national market so you guys continue to see the progression of data and what is happening under the hood of the real estate market. Lots to talk about, but before we get there, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please take just a moment, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notifications when I put out new videos. My commitment to you is unwavering. I wanna deliver you really high quality, very timely, very relevant information to make you a better investor. Now, you can also go to savantreport.com, link is in the description below. All it takes is your email address, sign up for my free once a month newsletter, uh, I guarantee you I deliver value and I do it for free. So without further ado, let's jump into today's data. All right, let's talk about some data that came out from realtor.com. We've got about a dozen charts to look at here and I'm gonna go through them one by one. The first one that we're gonna look at, and this is national data, okay? So we're not talking about any specific market uh, throughout the United States, we're talking about the United States as a whole. Active listings are up 30.7% year over year for July 2022 versus July 2021. That is a very, very big pace. But here's an important thing that I want you guys to keep um, a handle on and really keep in the front of your mind. You know, I talk a lot about the bearish side uh, and bearish potential for real estate. And I believe in that, and I will believe in that until the data shows me otherwise. Uh, but it might not be as bad as what perhaps my, you know, recency bias, having lived through the, the 2008, 2009, and 2010 crash, which was absolutely horrific. I was very, very invested, absolutely crushed me. Never been through a real estate market cycle uh, in my life up until that point in time. And I learned how bad they can be. So my bias is to expect, you know, negative things when the data is pointing negative. I don't ever want to have to relive what I went through during that period of time. Now, that doesn't mean that I think this is another 2008, 2009 kind of a cycle because I don't. But it's very relevant for you to know where my mind frame comes from. And my bias is, you know, look, when the data is showing, uh, you know, a, a negative backdrop, I think it's important to consider that the market uh, is very likely, especially at elevated values, very likely to come down. So when you put this into perspective, though, we are still way under the active listing counts for 2017, 2018, and 2019. So 2020, we can see, you know, the inventory started to drop in terms of active listings. Um, you know, inventory was getting gobbled up, especially later in the year, which we can see with this decline starting from about June all the way in uh, to December. And so here we see the exact opposite. So the trend that was happening in 2020, okay, has reversed. We are seeing the exact opposite. When inventory in 2020 started to go down, or I should say active listings, when active listings in 2020 were starting to go down, we're seeing the opposite happen. Active inventory is going up. Now, what started happening in 2020? Residential real estate values started skyrocketing. What is happening today? Residential real estate values are declining. So we can see that the trend that has been our friend for the last couple of years is turning around on us. All right, let's jump into the next chart that we've got here. This chart is the total listing count, okay? Now this one uh, is really not a big outlier in terms of year over year. Uh, July 2021 to July 2022, we only have three and a half percent um, year over year growth. I think uh, realtor.com actually messed up on this. If you look down here at the lines, it says three and a half percent year over year. If you look up here in the title, it says two and a half percent year over year. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm just a stickler for details like that. So uh, I'm, I'm going to try not to beat realtor.com up. Too bad they, they put out some great data. But three and a half percent year over year. Oh, excuse me. Let me go back to this chart here. 3.5% year over year in total listing count growth. That is above 2021, still below 2020, um, still below the last few years prior to that. 
All right, let's continue on. Let's go to newly listed homes. <clears throat> this one is basically right here in, uh, you know, in line, reasonably in line with the past number of years. So newly listed homes are actually down 2.8%, but not enough to really convince me one way or the other that this is bullish or bearish data. We're going to talk about why this is the case here towards the end of this video, and I'm going to explain why homes are not being listed for sale at the pace that you might expect in a declining market. All right, let's take a look at days on market. So uh, in comparison to July of 2021, we're actually less days on the market, two days less on a national basis. Um, you know, that continues to show some relative strength, some relative strength, to uh, the last year. And certainly when you look at this chart, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, all of these lines in terms of days um, on the market are higher, being more days on the market than what we presently are. But I want you to keep a very close eye on this trend, okay? Now we can see that this is a very seasonal metric here, right? All of these years consecutively, always start to decline from January and bottom out in summer, and that's exactly what's happening now. We're going to have to continue to watch this particular data point for the next few months to see if it actually starts spiking and going parabolic. That is very possible in my opinion, especially as we head into uh, the seasonally slower months here towards the end of the year. All right, let's dive in here even a little bit more. Let's go to median listing price. Wait, let me go back. Let's go to median listing price. Uh, I want to show this to you for a couple of reasons. Um, I want to show you the disparity between 2017 values, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. Okay, these lines in the in the year and the order that I just read them off for you show that from 2017 to 2022 values have appreciated almost a hundred percent. So if we take, you know, basically if we take May uh, ish of 2017 at a average value, give or take, of about 280,000, and today we're at roughly 450,000. We haven't quite doubled, but man, we're close. I mean, we're it's, it's just huge. The percentage of price appreciation is huge. And so when you're looking at you know, 280,000 versus 450,000. Keep in mind, interest rates today are about the same level as they were back then. That is a key metric that you need to keep in your mind here. The reason why these prices continue to appreciate, and especially 2020, 2021, and 2022, is because we've had low interest rates. Now, in the last six months, we have seen that change. We have seen interest rates effectively double in the last six to nine months. And so here we are with very, very high values and relatively high interest rates for the last couple of years. And then when you go back to where values were back here pre-pandemic 2017, 18, and 19, I think it's actually possible that we head back down towards a median sales price in the low 300s and I think to me, intuitively, that feels about right. I'm not going to say that that it has to or that it will. I'm just going to say that I think it's possible. You know, we have printed so much money and currency debasement has been a very real thing in the last two years. And that is one of the many reasons why we have inflation today. And when you look at this broadly, okay, you, you have to account for currency debasement in these appreciating value numbers. So I'm not going to say that we have to get back to pre-pandemic numbers, but I think a retracement close to that makes sense to me in my mind, at least with the data currently where it is right now. 
All right, let's talk about price reduced share of the market. Now, this one is actually, in my view, a very bearish indicator. We have talked on this channel a lot over the past couple of weeks about price drops and price drop percentages. They are huge. They are absolutely massive. They are spiking big time. So uh, when you look here at 2022, which is this gold colored line that is up 9.7% year over year, however, it's 19.1% of the market share of homes on the market have had their price reduced at least once. 19.1%. So that's, let's say, one-fifth of all homes on the market have had price reductions. That is way more than 2021, way more than 2020, way more than even 2019, and it's approaching 2017 levels, okay? So, folks, I got to tell you, this metric alone, remember, I keep talking about how real estate is slow to react, right? It's not the stock market. It's not crypto. When bad data comes out, bad news comes out, the real estate market doesn't just you know, make a move. Prices do not move fast. It's like turning the Titanic around. It takes a long period of time in a big space area to be able to turn the real estate market around. I think that this leading indicator here of price drops, it is a leading indicator, is telling us that prices are likely to fall. If we are reducing prices at 19.1% of available supply, uh, that's a huge, huge, huge number and, and a very ominous one at that. All right, let's look at some data here real quick. Listen, I'm going to let you guys just pause the video and look at this data if you want to. I'm going to leave it up for just another minute here. This basically just shows you statistically, um, you know, it breaks it down by region, Midwest, Northeast, South, and West. Uh, this just shows you what is happening year over year in terms of, you know, um, market data, median listing price, new listing count, active listing count, median uh, listing price per foot. It shows you what it's up. Median days on the market. You can see that the Midwest and the Northeast pretty close in terms of median days on the market to what we were last year. But you can pause this video and just look at this data a little bit closer if you'd like to. But I want to get to our market conclusions here, okay? This was some of the footnotes uh, or some of the commentary rather that Realtor.com put out. And I've uh, abbreviated and condensed it a little bit here. Uh, but I want to show you some of the highlights of the takeaway points of their data. So the median listing price grew by 13.3% over last year. <clears throat> so prices are still going up. Now, if you remember, the latter part of last year is when a lot of that appreciation took place. And so we are seeing, you know, not just a representative of all of 2021, but we're really watching what has happened in the last, you know, anywhere from 12 to maybe 10 or nine months. Uh, and watching how that data reflects to present year data. I have to tell you, um, a, a key takeaway for me was that the growth rate has slowed more convincingly week over week, and you can see that here in this first highlighted excerpt. It just seems to me that uh, as people are reducing prices and their expectations are falling more in line with what the market is willing to pay, that the growth rate is not only going to slow, but it's actually probably going to start to decline. But we're not going to see those big declines until next year's data. We're going to be seeing year over year data next year. And we're going to show the difference of 2022 numbers to what will then be 2023 numbers. And I think it's going to be negative. Uh, July, as the median asking price slipped to $449,000, that's down $1,000 from its June all-time high. Um, you know, I have to tell you, $1,000 isn't much, but it is something, okay? When we have seen a parabolic run in real estate values, not doubling, but almost doubling over the course of the last five years or so, and <clears throat> every year consecutively, we have seen increases in value. <clears throat> when you see a month, especially a summer month, with lower median asking prices, that's a big deal. That is 
a leading indicator to take note of. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about new listings. Um, with the cost of purchasing today's typical for sale home up more than 50% compared to a year ago, that's primarily due to interest rates. The three quarters of today's potential sellers are also planning to buy another home. So that is why I believe listings are down. New listings are down year over year and over the last couple of years because what are people going to do? If they're going to remain a home buyer or a home owner, I should say, they have to replace their home that they're selling with another home. Well, if they've bought in the last couple of years or if they've refinanced in the last couple of years, they could potentially have uh, have to, to go down in, in uh, downsize in homes to spend the same amount of money because interest rates are higher. Normally, when people sell a home and they plan to buy another home, as this data says that they are, they want to upgrade, right? They want to go into something better than what they presently have. But with interest rates double than what they were nine, 10 months ago, the affordability factor is out the window. And so I think a lot of people are saying, well, I'd like to move, I'd like to sell my home, I'd like to upgrade, I'd like to, to move up in the world in, in terms of real estate ownership, but they can't because they can't qualify now for that higher mortgage payment. They should probably can't afford that higher mortgage payment because interest rates are now five and a half or five and three quarters percent. They're not two and a half to two and three quarter percent. Okay, so uh, the last point on this data that I want to talk about quickly is homes spent an extra five days on the market compared to this time last year. For a third week in a row, homes are sitting on the market for longer than last year, and the gap has increased each week. Okay, so this is not a week over week, you know, flop in the data. This is a continued trend week over week. Uh, as we go down to the uh, to the bottom here, it says the Northeast, particularly historic New England, remain competitive as flexibility gives home shoppers the ability to locate uh, to locate further from big city job centers uh, in their search for a home. So the COVID effect of working from home and not needing to be in a big city, not having to go to the office is holding up, you know, certain parts of these markets. There are some bright spots. It's not all negative, but, you know, this data to me, although there are some bright spots and there's some uh, pieces of the data that don't look horrible, uh, to me, the overall picture, all indicators, you know, all the data taken into account it's still painting a very, very weak real estate market here. All right, that's all I got for you today, folks. I just want to remind you, go to savantreport.com. Go to the link in the description below. Um, it takes your email address. That's it. It's free. You get a once a month newsletter with information about real estate. You also get to front run um, everyone else when I get to um, actually put in a portal to some really fascinating, awesome, interesting, very informative charts uh, on savantreport.com, which are coming in the months ahead. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time on the Savant Report.